All right, uh, welcome to the second video on general chemistry and nomenclature. In this video, we're going to be going over naming uh, oxyanions, specifically non-metal oxyanions. Uh, so to begin, uh, let me just quickly define what that means. Uh, an oxyanion, we're basically going to have an atom. In this case, we're naming all non-metals. Uh, non-metal here, an atom, bonded to a certain amount of oxygens, so an atom and a certain amount of oxygens with, uh, with a charge, a specific charge. So the first thing we're going to learn is basically how to determine the charge. So we're going to determine the charge. We're going to determine this by adding up the group numbers. Um, really quick, if the group numbers add up to an even charge, it's going to be a negative 2 charge. I'm sorry, if the group numbers add up to an even number, it's going to be a negative 2 charge. If the group numbers add up to an odd number, it's going to be a negative 1 charge. And I'll go into that a little more. So just know first, all non-metal oxyanions are going to have either a negative 1 charge or a negative 2 charge. The only exception is a phosphorus oxyanion. So like phosphate, phosphite, uh, hypophosphite, for example, um, they will always have a negative three charge. So phosphorus is the only example, negative three charge. So either a negative one charge or negative two for all non-metal oxyanions. Only exception, again, is a phosphorus, a phosphorus oxyanion. So we're going to determine the charge by adding up the group numbers. So for example, I'm going to say carbonate, like carbonate. We're going to determine the charge of carbonate. So it's going to have a carbon. We're going to have a certain amount of oxygens um, in the next rule, in the next step. I'll teach you guys how to determine the amount of oxygens. And a certain charge. Right now we're determining charge. So carbonate. Carbonate. We're going to look at the periodic table. And if we look at the periodic table, we see that carbon lands in the 4A group, or 14, depending on how your periodic table looks. If we look at the oxygen, we see oxygen lands in the 6A group. To determine the charge, we're going to add up these numbers. If the sum of these numbers is an even number, you're going to have an even charge, so a negative 2. The same way, if the, odd, if, the, if the sum of these numbers is an odd number, you're going to have an odd charge, in this case a negative 1. Um, so for example, let's do an odd number. So we can do something like nitrate. So it's nitrogen bonded to a certain amount of oxygens and a charge. Nope, let me write the charge up here. So nitrogen bonded to a certain amount of oxygens with a charge. Um, so nitrogen lands in the 5A group. We're going to add that to the oxygen in the 6A group. We're going to add these together. It's going to give us an odd number. Odd number sum means odd number charge. The odd number here is negative 1. So nitrate will have a negative 1 charge. This will work for any, any non-metal oxyanion except for uh, phosphate, because phosphate will always have a three charge. So if we do um, if we do sulfur, sulfate. Sulfate, we're gonna have a uh, sulfur bonded to a certain number of oxygens. We're first gonna determine the charge. Sulfur is in the 6A group. Oxygen we already know to be in the 6A group. We're going to add these up. The sum is going to give us an even number. So an even number chart, an even number sum means an even number charge. So sulfate is going to have negative two charge. So again, add up the group numbers. If the group numbers add up to an odd number, you're going to have a negative one charge. If the group numbers add up to an even number, you're going to have a negative two charge. The only exception again is anything with 
phosphorus, phosphate, phosphite, etc. All right. So now we determine the charge. The charge is the easy part. We're going to determine the number of oxygens. So to determine the number of oxygens, first what we're going to do is learn all the eights, like um, like carbonate, nitrate, fluorate, chlorate, all the eights. The rule of this, not metals. Here's the rule. Here's the trick to this. The noble gases don't count, of course. All the all the atoms, I call this the racetrack. All the atoms on the racetrack, from carbon to fluorine down to iodide. If the atom, if the atom lands along the racetrack, you know the racetrack kind of surrounds it, surrounds all the nonmetals. If the atom lands along the racetrack. The number of oxygens for the eight version of it is always going to be three. So if it lands on the racetrack, it's going to have three oxygens when we're naming the eight. So like carbon eight will have three oxygens. Fluorate will have three oxygens. Iodate will have three oxygens. So that's rule number two. Determine number of oxygens. Okay, so if it lands on the racetrack, it has three oxygens. If it doesn't land on the racetrack, it's going to have four. Simple as that. If it's here, from, carb from carbon to fluorine down to iodide, it's going to have three oxygens. If it's not and it's still non metal, it's going to have four. So either three or four. Always have three or four. The charge will always be negative one or negative two, except for phosphorus. So let's, uh, let's look at a few examples. Um, or we can do nitrate. So nitrate, to determine the charge, we're going to determine the charge. Nitrogen is in the 5A group. Oxygen is in the 6A group. We're going to add up the group numbers, giving us a sum that is an odd number. That means nitrate is going to have a negative 1 charge. To determine the number of oxygens, nitrogen lands on the racetrack. So if it lands on the racetrack, it will always have three oxygens, the eight version of it. So this is nitrate. Uh, let's look at another one. If we do, we can do phosphate. So phosphate is the only exception to the charge rule. We know automatically that's going to be a negative three. Um, but it still, char it still follows the oxygen rule. So phosphorus is not on the racetrack, meaning that it's going to have four oxygens, four oxygens. Phosphate. Uh, we'll do another one. We're going to do uh, sulfur. We're uh, naming sulfate in this case. Sulfur is in the 6A group. Oxygen is also in the 6A group. We're going to add up those group numbers together, giving us uh, an even even sum, which will mean an even charge, negative two. Sulfur is not on the racetrack, thus four oxygens. Okay, uh, let's do one more. We'll do uh, bromine. So we're going to name bromate. Again, first we're going to determine how to name all the eights. So bromate. So it's going, be, it's going to be a bromine bonded to an oxygen, a certain amount of oxygen, and a charge. Well, the charge, bromine, is in the 7A group. Oxygen is in the 6A group. We're going to add those together. It's going to give us an odd number sum. So the sum is odd. That means the charge is going to be negative 1, odd. Uh, bromine is down here. It's on the racetrack. That means the number of oxygens is going to be 3. This is uh, bromine. And again, this works for all non-metal oxyanions. So now that we determined all the eights, 
iodate, carbonate, sulfate, phosphate. We're going to basically learn all the ites and uh, per eight and hypo ites. We're going to do that by following this table. So this is the table we're following. We've already learned how to name all the eights. So that's going to be our baseline. We're going to work off of this, all the eights. The only difference between all of these is the number of oxygens. What's important that you realize is that the charge never changes. They always have the same charge. The only thing that changes is the number of oxygens. So if we look at um, fluorine, we haven't done fluorine. FLO, the charge, let's first determine the charge. Um, FL lands in the 7A group. Oxygen lands in the 6A group. We're going to add those together. We're going to get an odd number. We're going to get 13, which is odd, um, giving us an odd charge of negative 1. Again, it's going to be negative 1 or negative 2, except for phosphorus, which is always negative 3. Determine the number of oxygens. Well, the fluorine... lands on a racetrack, which means fluorate version of it is going to have three oxygens. So this is where we're at. This is our baseline. If I were to add an oxygen, if I were to add an oxygen making this FLO4 minus, basically we went from here to here. We're adding one oxygen. So this is now per flow rate, per flow rate. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back down. Bring it back down to the baseline. Where was our starting point here? We're back to flow rate. If I take an oxygen away, making this FLO2, it is now flow right. In the same way, if I take another one away, if I take another oxygen away, making this FLO1 or just FLO with the minus charge, uh, we now have hypofluorite, hypofluorite. And again, this will work with all non-metal oxy anions. Uh, let's look at another one. We haven't done iodide. So, we know that this lands on the racetrack. So, it lands on the racetrack, it's going to have three oxygens. We're going to add up the group numbers 7A plus 6A, giving us 13. That's odd. The sum is odd. That means it's going to have a negative one charge. So, I have eight. This is that eight version of it again. Version of it. I have eight. I add an oxygen per iodate, per the root word, in this case the nonmetal, eight, per iodate. Back to our starting point, iodate, we're here again. We're going to take two away this time. From I3 minus two, making it just I1 or just like that. IO minus 1 is hypoiodite. Hypoiodite. It's like that. And this will work with any of them. 